Hi and welcome to the German Fußball Podcast. I'm your host, Marcus Fjordsoff, and as always joined by my dad, Jan Fjordsoff, for this special episode of Bayern Munich, Oliver Kahn and Hassan Salahamidzic's departure from Bayern. Dad, just give us the background, the timeline for what has been happening. Yeah, and not being a boring weather speaker, that I start with the beginning and people think that I will go on forever. But I... We have to say the background of Bayern Munich is the most, one of the most fascinating clubs in the whole world. And it's more or less a startup. And I would say that, Mark, is because in the end of the 70s, Uli, Uli, Hoeneß, Uli Hoeneß kind of, he was 27, 28 years of age, had had a fantastic career for West Germany and Bayern Munich. And he took over the club and he built it up. Although they had success, they won three European Cups in a row in the 70s, they were not a great financial powerhouse in, in, in Europe. And the way Uli Hoeneß built this club was amazing. Later, he always got help from Franz Beckerbauer, another Bayern legend, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, another Bayern legend. Why is that important? Yes, it is important because all startups, there is a time when that regime, so to say, will end. So Uli Hoeneß and Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, they had key positions in the club. Uh, and then they decided we need someone to take over from that. And... Uliana used to be the manager as well. He was the boss, the Don Corleone. He was everything at the club. The head of sport. They didn't have that kind of role in that. He, he was everything. So, so then they had different manager, Christian Nerlinger. They always had a former Bayern player in those key positions. So they got uh, uh, Salahamisic, or called Bratzo. I will say Salahamisic and Bratzo uh, in, in, in different ways now, uh, as the head of sport. He was uh, head of recruitment, but then they needed a CEO, uh, a CEO. And I think some part of the problem started there because it's OK to take a former Bayern player to be the head of sport. But to take the head of a club, one of the biggest brand in Germany, I mean, maybe the biggest brand. OK, no disrespect to BMW, Hugo Boss uh, or Mercedes and all the big brands. But then they choose, they picked Oliver Kahn. And Oliver Kahn came in, he had uh, some background from, the, um, from business life. He had did some, done some courses. And I'm saying that in a, in a, in a, way, of, uh, a way that I'm, I'm taking a bit down because he, they were sold in that this man was so suitable to run because you run the whole club, not only the sport, you run the whole club. So Oliver Kahn came in. And it has to be said, in fairness to Oliver Kahn and Bratzo, it would be hard for anyone coming after Uli Hoeneß. It would be hard for anyone to come after Karl-Heinz Rummenigge. Karl-Heinz Rummenigge was kind of the head of commercials in person as well, but he was also the foreign minister of the club. So then Oliver Kahn, Bratzo, take the club over, take, take over at, at the club. And things are slowly getting worse in terms of the reputation around the club. Do they win uh, Meisterschaft, the, the, champion, uh, uh, the Champions League? Both they do. They win the Bundesliga and, 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 the, and the Champions League with Brad. So great highlight for them. Uh, but slowly this season, it started with a big project, Julian Nagelsmann. And it has to be said because it started everything with Nagelsmann. He was the, he was the man for the future. The man for the future who stayed there for a generation. I mean, just to say that in Bayern is funny because they, they like to fire the manager with, with, the, with the trouble is going on. Even the legendary Otto Reagel was fired just months before they, they were in the final of the UEFA Cup back in the day. So this is a club that have a tradition to fire manager when things are going bad. So Julian Nagelsmann stays on for the first season. Uh knocked out by Villarreal in the Champions League, start the new season. And remember, and we talked about that a lot on this uh, podcast, they didn't have a striker. But Julian Nagelsmann, honestly, or loyal, what do I know? Or maybe he thought so, maybe a bit naive. He said, without Robert Lewandowski, who scored like between 30 and 40 goals every season, we will be more flexible. And it started okay, but at the end of the day, they got... Worse and worse. There was no stability in the team. 
and he ending up in a, I would say, in a cruel way, because that is something to do with the situation that happened this weekend, the cruel way they fired Julia Nagelsmann. So Julian Nagelsmann was told, or his team was told by journalists, that he was fired. He was in a famous ski holiday. I remember that is the key of this season as well for Bayern, because ski holidays, Manuel Neuer went there, out for the season. Julian Nagelsmann went in a ski holiday, out for the season. Yeah. He also went, it's interesting to say, he got divorced, and, uh, and he got, uh, then what do you say, liaison. His girlfriend was then a built site journalist, who, a build site journalist who used to work with Bayern and now his girlfriend. Why is that important? Because that was a part of the package said that he didn't have the trust the credibility at the club. It was a small part of it. So then they picked Thomas Tuchel. Thomas Tuchel is there to just to save them three titles. Wanted to win them the, the Pokal, the Cup, Champions League, although it's going to be hard because they're going to play Manchester City and then the Bundesliga. But it, it, it didn't work out that way. They were knocked out of both cups. And uh, around the Manchester City game, uh, the, the home game, I was told from very good sources that Oliver Kahn was on his way out, that the board had decided they will get rid of him after the season. And this I is was about told, a, month, a month ago, right? Yeah, this it's is uh, yeah the, the 19th of April. Right. The 19th of El April... Uh, Manchester City, uh, they are at Allianz Arena in, in, in Munich. Uh, and we've heard rumours that they were not happy with Oliver Kahn. But I got it confirmed at the beginning of that week that Oliver Kahn was to go out. Of course, that is a big shout, Marcus. It's, if, to tweet that is one of the most powerful uh, players in, in, the, in the German football. So I, I needed to be sure. So I, I checked it again. And my source said to me, Yes, Jan, it's 100%, but make sure don't do it before the game because that you never know. They win 5-0 against, uh, uh, against Manchester City. Maybe they change your mind. You will look like a fool uh, or whatever. That is not a good timing doing that. So what I did uh, 19th in the afternoon, I said, yeah, I promise you that. I wait till after the game. And I, as you remember, Marcus, so, so around 5, 4-ish, 4, 5-ish uh, in the afternoon, I said, there will be a big news coming out tomorrow. And some of my colleagues in Germany tried to find out what we're talking about. Uh, Christian Falk, our friend at Bild Zeitung, he, he was there with Tobi Alshef, his colleague at Bayern. And he told me that they were thinking, no, I hope Jan is not doing this Khan thing because we are in, into that investigation. Hopefully he will do Salah Hamidzic uh, because that is not so 100% sure that he will be fired. And then the next day, I think it was 1-1 in the first game uh, between um, Bayern Munich and and Manchester City. I remember the time because I was very into time also to protect my source, also to to kind of uh, tell my source that you can rely on me. So 8.17, I think, in the morning, the Thursday, I said that Oliver Kahn was on his way out, that the board will sack him. So... You remember, Marcus, it's exploded in the German media. I had all kind of uh, questions. Why and where and how? Are you sure? A lot of the people also ridiculed me uh, about that. I only The only thing I did, I did the podcast for Bayern Insider talking about that. I said no to every other TV station because that was the purpose was just for me to, to get that news uh, in. And a lot of things been, been talked about. Bill Saiton confirmed it as well. There was a lot of people com- confirmed my report. And then the next weeks we heard about it. Was someone said to me that uh, Oliver Kahn was already told a, a week ago, but I didn't believe that 100%. And it, as it showed this week, it wasn't 100%. Uh, but then... Then we go into the last round, and we'll, we'll in on a, in our ordinary episode we will talk about the spectacular title race. But it's a Saturday before it's 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 a, the last Saturday of the of the campaign. Dortmund only have to win at home against Mainz. Bayern got to go to Köln. They they've already kind of think that the Meisterschaft, the Meisterschale, the trophy will go to Dortmund. So. So Bayern think that it's time to go to action. Typical Bayern, they think they go to action. So what is happening is that on Thursday, Herbert Heiner, who is the president, 
And Uli Hoeneß, who is the boss, yes, I, 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 I know that that sentence doesn't sound uh, properly in a strategic structure way in Germany. Uh, they had a meeting with Oliver Kahn and Salah Hamasic. Not together, but they had a, a meeting with them. This is Thursday this week. Uh, they are told that we, you will be out, you will be fired, but we we'll give you 24 hours to just come to terms with that. We find a, fi a fine way, in a friendly way, as friendly it is to be told to F off, but that's, that's, that's the plan. I'm not just uh, saying what, what the plan is. So Bratzo, he reacts like you expect Bratzo to do, because I think Bratzo is a good lad. Uh, Bratzo is one of, one of the boys. I think that he has felt he's been very privileged to have the position of head of sport. You can discuss his recruitments the last season. But still, he, he, was, he used the strate strategy to say, yes, okay, I respect that. I have to respect that. And yes, we'll find a friend, friendly way coming into the, the, the curl game. Oliver Kahn decided to react or react, did quite, quite opposite. He was furious. Mind you, Marcus, and this is word against word. Oliver Kahn says himself that he was peacefully receiving this message. And then you have the other extreme variant who was uh, said by the Sport One director, Gottschalk, and he had heard that uh, Oliver Kahn had threatened to spill the beans about the politics at Bayern, that he nearly got in a fight with Dresden, the new CEO. But as I said, we, we, just, we just have to believe who we want to believe, but these are the two, two options of that. So the next day, there was the plan that they will have another call. Calm down now, Mr. Khan, uh, Heiner and Hanna said. We call tomorrow and we find a friendly way to do this. So next day, they have a, a, a call again. Again, different options of who to believe. He said that, he, that they couldn't agree on a peaceful ending. What so, does that mean? What does uh, is it is from a financial I, package or from a? I think the I think that yeah, it's a good question because I think I think the financial package will be sorted. That they will find a way because that is probably into the contract. But it's a peaceful way that I, I think that he he felt that his proudness was hurt. We know Oliver Kahn as a player. You don't change as a human being. And fair enough, I'm not making any judgment on anyone because there are different ways we, we react to dif different stress situations. But whatever, who is right and who would say what, in the evening, and that is this is a ruthless thing of the top markers, is that in the evening, because they can't agree, Heiner and Hernes. And there are two, Aufsichtsrat is a supervisory board. They have two boards at Bayern. And Uli Hönes is sitting, to be fair to him, in the, in the formal supervisory board, Aufsichtsrat. They just fired Oliver Kahn. And then, again, word against word, Oliver Kahn said he was told not to go to Köln. And I guess Bayern is saying, why should you go to Köln? You don't have a job at Bayern. And it sounds ruthless. This is a legend of the club. This is the CEO mm -hmm. of the club. This is the boss of the club. Uh, but then it starts getting complicated because Bayern then says that Oliver Kahn, and for the people listening to this, it's a soap opera, but it's a soap opera, FC Hollywood, as they are called in, in Munich. Mm -hmm. Oliver Kahn then says that he was told not to go to Köln for the last game. Bayern said, well, you sent us a text and said that you had a summer flu or a summer cold so you couldn't go. So we are in the kindergarten, Marcus. This, this, I, I know it's childish. I just want to say the timeline here. At the end of the day, Bratzo Salahamisic is traveling with the team to Köln. Khan is not traveling. He's not in the stand. And as we will speak about in, in our original uh, episode, they're ending up winning the title. Bratzo is in the stands supporting his team during the emotional ride when Musiala do, uh, do the winner and they win the league. They go, drive, they go home to Munich in two private jets, which is quite interesting. They just landed in Munich and Bratzo was part of the celebration. So they celebrate the, the league trophy. The next day, and I come to an end now on this soap opera of, of my timeline, the next day, 
Bayern will do a press conference, Herbert Heiner. So Herbert Heiner then has the, 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 the chance to take it from his side. Just before the press conference, what happening? Oliver Kahn sends out a tweet explaining that from his point of view, I was calm, I was not told to go, and there was a lot of things in this tweet. So he, he kind of went into this uh, press conference to have last word before the press conference. Herbert Heiner, of course, he's a calm guy. He, is, uh, he has his background from Adidas. He is a big, great friend of Ole Hoeneß. I mean, that is a part of the, the story here as well. They presented Dresden. Dres, Dresden has been a guy that's been in the club. He's been identified with the club. He was head of finances. Now he's going to, he, he signed a two year contract uh, to be a CEO of Bayern. Karl Heinz Rummenigge, who was uh, uh, retired, he is coming back in some kind of, uh, of position uh, at the club. But at this press conference, there was, it, was a, it was like a funny press conference but because this is the day after they won the league. This is the day where the Frauen, the Bayern Frauen, the, the women's team of Bayern, win, win the title. So they have a double title winning team and it's just chaos around them. So they end the day uh, in, in Munich center. They go on this balcony. The women's team, the men's team is on the, um, in, on, in the balcony. Bratso is there. Salahamidzic is there celebrating with Thomas Tuchel. It has to be said that Thomas Tuchel, after the game, he was furious at what, what happened. And people saying, ah, maybe he will leave the club. And so I don't think so. I think it's quite opposite. I think that Thomas Tuchel now will be the strong, strong man. I think that he will be more than an English manager type that he was used to in, in, in other clubs that he has been. They will bring in a sports forestand, a new guy. Max Erbel of RB Leipzig has been, we've been talked about him. He just started a job in RB Leipzig. I can't believe if Leipzig let him go to Bayern. Even Markus Krösche, my friend in Frankfurt, has been mentioned and so on. So they're working on that. What was quite interesting, Marcus, was that the fans... Uh, I think it's Marienplatz uh, in uh, in Munich. They when Heiner came onto the stage, they uh, celebrated Heiner. I don't think that is a great sign for Oliver Kahn, a Bayern legend, being a CEO. So the era Oliver Kahn is out. The era Oliver Kahn. I remember I was sitting on the TV studio and I were I were told, "Did you feel hurt when Oliver Kahn said about you?" also me, uh, that Elgant Aina, someone tweeted someone, this is what it's all about. Do I sit here now and think, well, I was right? Yeah, I do. I'm very proud of that. That is a part of my journalistic job. But having said that, I can understand this is difficult for the people to get thrown out. But as we saw, especially the thing that Bayern did on Friday night, when they kind of fired him and kind of told him some in some directly or indirectly way, why should you go to Köln because you're not an employee at the club? I mean, just shows you, Marcus, how ruthless, ruthless this business is. Do I think that that is terrible? No, I don't. Sorry, I, I'm not built like that because I've been in this business. You, Marcus, have been in this business. You know how ruthless it is. You, you know how ruthless it is on the pitch and. The ruthless is, of course, outside the pitch as well. So if you can't take the heat, get the beep out of the kitchen. And with that fantastic recap there, I do wonder, Kimmich was, was asked about this following their celebrations, about the timing of the announcement. Um, is it one of those that it, it could have been better if they did wait a few days after? Because... Bayern win and in whatever fashion you might think of Bayern, Bayern will, but the Bundesliga title is a, well, it's the base. You From there, you win the cup or the Champions League, but that's the expectation. Um, but as we'll touch upon in our other episode in the recap, the, the headlines weren't really about Dortmund losing out on the title, more so than it was this firing of this head of sport and the CEO. Um is there a different way they could have done it with obviously us sitting here in our podcast chairs and acting like football experts, but even still, is there a better way for them to have, to have done that? Absolutely. Um, as it was, because that's why I, I brought in the Nagelsmann thing. 
as there was a different way to do the Julian Nagelsmann story. Uh, his agent Volker Struth being called up by journalists and been told that his client, his only coaching tal- uh, client, by the way, uh, was being fired. Who did that? Salahamidzic and Oliver Kahn. So that's what I'm saying is you you live by the sword, sword, you die by the sword. And that is a part of the game. Of course, Marcus, one minute after the game, Thomas Müller is running over to Sebastian Hellmann, my colleague from Sky. He's standing there next to another legend of, of Bayern, Lothar Mateus, and being told that the CEO, that the head of sport, are gone. And Thomas Müller, the joker, he is, he's like, he, he's the right man to be there because he will find a way to, to see it. But, and he's, I know, well, what, what about the timing? But having said that, Mark, that would never happen to Dortmund. That would never happen to Manchester United or Liverpool. That is another culture of those clubs. That would, well, in England, it won't happen anyway because you don't have so many people talking into the media anyway. But that is just the Bayern way. I think that this weekend's kind of sum up Bayern on the pitch and off the pitch. This is all about the club. Nobody is bigger than the Ole Hernes. So Ole Hernes is the boss here. He is. He, it's his club. Should I say that? No, because it, it, people would say it's wrong. But it's his club. He's still the man. And, I, and you, Marcus, you know that. You know I've been a big admirer of Uli Hoeneß uh, all my football life because I've, I've had a pleasure to follow Bayern because it's so a fascinating club. I've had a pleasure to talk to him. I had a pleasure to meet him while he was in prison, when he was out in a vulnerable state. I met him in Sebenerstrasse, had a, a chance... Uh, through uh, um, to to their uh, sport of uh, director at that time, uh, uh, and that made me see a human being that was vulnerable. But I also saw the strong, strong man, and uh, I will always be thank- uh, thankful to the head of sport at Areske who put me into that position because. I've always been a fan of Ole Ole Hernes, and people say, "How can you be a fan of a guy who is so ruthless?" <laughs> It's hard to explain, but it's it's in the game. It's 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 a name of the game. Uh, it's just a part of business. And could they to back to your original question? Could they have done it differently? Of course they could. Oliver Kahn, he has a family. His brother went out on Facebook and more or less crucified Uli Hernes, uh, just to to put the record straight. He's a Bayern legend. He's one of the biggest legends, Oliver Kahn, with all the trophies and everything. But having said that, and you, Marcus, know, I've been, a, I've been always be truthful to my analysis. There can't be enough, be a former Bayern legend, to be a CEO, not a head of sports. You can't get away with that. Back from the fire alarm, and back from the fire alarm at Bayern uh, in the hotel. I'm still in London. Um, so it can't be enough, Marcus. And I think that is also down to Uli Hoeneß because Uli Hoeneß, he always wants former Bayern legend. I think that is the loyalty of the club. A paradox is, of course, that the biggest success they've had is for Otmar Hitzfeld. It's from um, from uh, uh, from Jupp Heynckes, not particularly Bayern kind of background, but still being integrated into to the Bayern. They had Kovac, they had, like I said, Christian Nerlinger. They got a lot of former players. Bratzo is also a former Bayern player. It's interesting to see how they did react, Marcus. And I think that Bayern today, if if I was sitting here now talking to Hernes, Heine and Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, I think that they would say, and they will probably say in the coming days, that the reaction of Oliver Kahn just make them right. Mm -hmm. Uh, The way he reacted on the situation. But this this is psychology. I'm not one to judge. We should not judge the reaction of Oliver Kahn. Maybe we would have done, done, done the same. But the truth is, and that was one of the reasons I tweeted this uh, the 20th of April, was that people were not happy with him. The, the people working at Bayern were not happy with him. They were not happy in how he integrated them in his plans. They didn't like him doing a kind of McKinsey kind of project at Bayern. They didn't feel that he will... Uh, Although he was a Bayern legend, he, he wanted to make it new. Having said that, it's the hardest thing in any company, that be business, that be everywhere, in politics, 
if you come after a strong man, if you come after a strong man. And I remember, dude, I told you, Marcus, uh, I was in Salzburg when Salzburg played Bayern Munich in the Champions League. I was in a TV studio. All the Bayern giants were sitting 20 meters from me. And I said to the people around me, and I called you and said the same, it was, it was quite clear to see that Oliver Kahn never searched the kind of closeness to Uli Hoeneß. Again, as a new boss, as a new CEO, you want to find your own way. And maybe when Oliver Kahn in, in the future will think, what should I have done differently? Maybe that was the mistake he did. Would we have done the same mistake? I wouldn't have done that mistake, but I think it's a common mistake that you want to keep to make a new kind of regime. You want to make your philosophy. You, you want to make your thoughts in there. And it's clear to see that Oliver Kahn tried to modernize Bayern without being clear enough of the legacy of Uli Hoeneß, the culture at the club. And that's just a fact. And mm -hmm. that's why Oliver Kahn now is history at Bayern Munich. You did allude to it a bit earlier, but what is your predicted structural overview of this club going forward now? Tuchel may be asserting more of a, an influence higher up in terms of recruitment, whatever, looking for a head of sport. Then you have Uli Hoeneß, who you say is the boss, who's on the board, but had, well, from the outside, stepped back even further. Will there be, will Uli Hoeneß take on more of a formal role? What will that hierarchy look like, you think? I don't think that, uh, I don't think that Uli Hoeneß will, will do a formal role. He still will keep on doing what he's doing at the moment. Mind you, after that tweet at the 20th of April, all the discussion has been now for uh, a month and nine days. He hasn't said a word yet. The only thing he has done is that he went on the training ground talking to Tuchel. You say it best when you say nothing at all, because that showed you, hey, listen, I am the guy. I, I've still got everything in charge. He has managed now. Heine is in there, the boss of the club, who is a sensible, good man. He's an old-fashioned leader, I would say. He got Karl-Heinz Rummenigge back in the folder again. Uh, are Rummenigge and Hoeneß best friends? Will they go on holiday together now? Will they kind of all over the years compete a bit? Who, this is my coach, this is your player? Yes, they would. But this dynamic at Bayern has always worked well, so they would got him. But Dresden is the, the business kind of guy. Uh, so if you, if you didn't know Dresden, and I said, Marcus, have a look in the stand. Who was the head of finance? Who is now the new CEO? He is the guy. This is the guy. I think it's right that Bayern should have a CEO like that. In terms of sport, they will look for a head of sport. There can also be a combination. They, they, can always, they, can, they can even end up with three. You can have a, I think of a structural perspective. You can make a head of sport, like you have a head of finance, head of business, head of, of, of uh, juridical, jury, uh, you know what uh, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, with all. I'm the, leaving I, you to it because I don't think I can say it either. Yeah, the, the lawyers and that kind of thing, the, the law and order at the club. You can have that that yeah. position as well. But I think that you can you can end up having. Um, they could go for a head of sport. They could do that. But you, when you have uh, Uli Hoeneß and Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, you have great sport minds already there. But they could do maybe a manager who comes in. We would call it manager. Uli Hoeneß always called himself manager. But they can also bring in a team manager like they do at uh, Dortmund. You have like uh, Sebastian Kehl, who is a team manager, so to say, but he's still a head of sport. So you can have that role, a former Bayer player. Max Ebel played there. He was uh, the chosen one. M uh, Max Ebel was the choice of Uli Hoeneß, and, and it didn't work out for some reason. Max Ebel thought that it was not the right time to go to Bayer. So that could end up. But I think that uh, Thomas Tuchel... Uh, will be more part of the recruitment uh, work. He will be more part of the, the longer perspective. They're coming into a very important summer for them now. We have to make an episode on uh, that as well, talking about the players they need, but they know they need a striker. They they will look for a number six, a new number six. Uh, they're not happy, they're completely happy with that. Something's going to be decided on Cancelo's future. Uh, there is a lot of other 
players linked to them. So I think Thomas Tuchel will be in there and uh, even play a bigger part because Thomas Tuchel, he's a worker. He's nearly working too hard. He is one of those guys who will be 24-7 there. And I think they would, they, it makes sense that they make use of his knowledge also in that part of it. So at the end of the day, Marcus, to, to finish this episode, uh, Bayern are champions. Nobody's talking about that. But mm-hmm. still, typical Bayern are, are, are the champions. Julian Nagelsmann will probably can put that on his uh, resume as well he, because he's won won the league. But Thomas Tuchel did, and you said that at the start, uh, the Bundesliga is the milk and bread, uh, so to say, trophy for them. And uh, but it's been amazing. And I saw today that Oliver Kahn kind of sending out some peace signal to Bayern. Someday in the future, we have to sit together again uh, and do all those kind of things. What I can say, Marcus, um, I feel privileged to uh, be able to uh, work a lot in Germany because it's a most fascinating league to be a journalist, to be a, uh, to do the analysis in because there is always something happened. And, and uh, like I said, Bayern has been like this for all my life and they will probably be for all your life as well, Marcus. And I guess what Tuchel's appointment goes to show is as world-class of a manager Tuchel is, it doesn't start and end with the coach either. There are uh, structural uh, things in place that leads to a club's success. A Uli Hoeneß, a Rummenigge is an incremental or a big part of that. Um, but it's not only that it comes down to the coach, right? And um, when you have someone like Oliver Kahn, who's has a very impressive playing pedigree but it's a ceo position and you are defined by results that if you can't handle the heat get out of the kitchen like you said and the same apply for nagel's fund so this is this is football um this was a very comprehensive recap and i appreciate it for that dad because there are a lot of reports going this way and that way but that will not be the last we will report on this either during the summer we will have sure will be a lot of updates a lot of changes um in that regard but um thanks dad and then um yeah until next time auf wiedersehen